I believe that now is the moment that business must act to save itself, provided I have my presentation. <laughs> <clears throat> what business must do is learn how to be human. For this to work, we need leaders that can think differently. We need leaders that can be human. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how I know all of this with the aid of a, a curious metaphor. It is a goose in a bottle. So here you are, a Ted, seeking to galvanize your aspiration, and I give you a goose in a bottle. I promise it will be worth it. There's a very old Zen parable about uh, a monk and a high-ranking official. The official had heard the story of a man who put a gosling into a bottle, and day by day, feeding it through the mouth of the bottle, the goose grew as big as the bottle that held it. And now here's the riddle. How did the man free the goose without killing it or breaking the bottle? The official begged the monk to share the secret, but instead, the monk shouted loudly at the official, Rico! That was the official's title, Rico. It was deeply inappropriate for a monk of such low station to shout at an official, but the official quickly forgot himself and replied, Yes, master. Now you understand, said the monk. The goose is out. As it turns out, we are all geese in bottles of our own making. All the stuff that we create, our tools, our systems, our institutions, that's our bottle. We're like the official. We're, we're certain of our station. We're certain that everything is as it should be, and, and often we're right about that. But there are moments where we, like the goose, are too big for the bottle. And there are moments where we, like the official, must learn to forget ourselves. Now, it's poignant that it was an official that received enlightenment in the parable because now is the moment for leaders that can get us out of the bottle. One reason we can know this is because we're in pain. I mean, just look at our cultural narratives. They tell us that we no longer trust our institutions. We no longer trust finance or business or governance. Only 10% of Americans say they have confidence in Congress. In 1972, 42% of us did. Two-thirds of us say, you can't be too careful with other people. In 72, we still trusted one another. We're in pain because we've grown in the bottle, and we've filled all the available space, and the shape of the bottle has become painful, and we've lost trust in our institutions because they're the administrators of the bottle. How can we trust them when the bottle is hurting us? So this whole bottle metaphor is very much like Thomas Kuhn's paradigm. We used to think that the, the way things got better was a little at a time. You know, so we would encounter something we didn't understand, and we'd figure it out. And that would allow us to make our bottle a little bigger, and we'd just sort of repeat that process. But Kuhn showed us that it doesn't work like that. The way it works is we build a bottle, and it stays the same. We are the ones that change. We grow in the bottle as we learn more about it, and we fill it up as we go. And anything that doesn't fit, we ignore. But eventually, we grow too big for the bottle, and we start to covet some of those things that don't fit inside the bottle, and the pressure builds, and then pop, there's this moment, and then the goose is out. There's a new paradigm, a new bottle. So the bottle is a paradigm, and when we grow so big that we don't fit, we start to feel pain, we lose trust, and that's exactly what's happening in our culture right now. So another reason that we can know that now is the moment is because we want things that don't fit in the bottle. In fact, we're creating things that don't fit in the bottle. Marshall McLuhan wrote, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. Throughout history, at every inflection point in the development of human culture, there have been tools that preceded and facilitated change. Uh, when, a, when a new tool comes along that jumps outside our paradigm, it, it requires us to think differently. It rearranges our lives, and nothing inside the old bottle can at, anticipate or, or adequately explain the change. So when a new tool comes along at the right moment, it can create a new bottle. And we have tools that are outside our bottle right now. There is nothing in our top-down, brute force, hierarchical, technocratic, binary, reductionistic, deterministic bottle that anticipated or adequately explains Pinterest. <laughs> I 
Uh, networks in general and the internet specifically have given rise to applications and models that are unlike anything inside our old bottle. And business desperately wants to realize the value of these new tools. But most of their attempts look foolish and invite ridicule. I mean, just look at the buzz around authenticity, transparency, and creativity. Our old bottle has a hard time with these concepts. I mean, can a big traditional company really be your friend? A and did the intimacy of that fleeting Twitter exchange with Katy Perry really mean that she's, you know, my new BFF? <laughs> IBM CEO surveys now tell us that chief executives value creativity more than anything else, and yet our corporate structures tend to marginalize and, and crush creative people. So now is the moment for business to act and get out of the bottle and be human. We know this because we're stuck, we're in pain, we're losing trust, and we want things we can't have. So why do leaders matter in this moment? I think about it in terms of the pain that we're feeling. Solutions that are offered from inside the bottle are familiar. We derive comfort from the idea that the thing that always worked will continue to work. And leaders know this. Most of the time, leadership is about finding an empty space inside the bottle, but not when it's time to get out of the bottle. Perhaps you've heard of the great communication theorist Everett Rogers' diffusion of innovations curve. The basic idea is that a very small fraction of people, 2.5%, will innovate, and another 13.5% will adopt an innovation because they see the vision or they just like new stuff. But everyone else, the other 84% of us will only adopt a new thing because someone else has. So that creates a, a demarcation here in the curve that I call the motivation horizon. So everyone to the left of the motivation horizon is motivated by vision or novelty, and everyone to the right is motivated by proof or bona fides. So now let's imagine this curve moving over a moment of change. We'll, we'll place the ictus of that moment right at the motivation horizon so that everyone on the left is now in a new bottle and everyone on the right is in the old bottle. Now if our leaders are the ones that administrate the bottle essentially, then in our imagined moment, where might they be? Let's look at two moments of change from history, the American and the French Revolution. Right? We'll call the old bottle tyranny, and we'll call the new bottle liberty. In these revolutionary moments, where were the leaders? In the American Revolution, the leaders were, for the most part, revolutionaries. They, they were to the left of the motivation horizon. In the French Revolution, the nobles and the clergy were kind of like, hey, you know, can we just keep things the way they are? So they were to the right of the motivation horizon. <laughs> so why does this matter? In moments of change, does the location of leaders influence the outcome. In the American Revolution, the leaders were part of the revolution, and they helped to preserve important institutions by helping those institutions discover a new context. In the French Revolution, the leaders were the targets of the revolution, and they were able to preserve little, not even their lives. So in moments of change, leaders that can push through the motivation horizon and get out of the bottle help to preserve important institutions. These are the leaders that ensure that change is progress and not destruction. So it's time for us to, to get out of our bottle. I mean, every day our media shows us that our narratives, our, our future histories are suffused with pain and suffering. I, I'm most frightened by the sparkly vampires, but... So what's the answer to the riddle? How do we get out the goose out of the bottle? Forget yourself. That's the answer. Is it too weird? Doesn't make sense? Too bad. That's how Zen works. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. When we, first arrived at, when we first arrived at this challenge, we were like the official in the story, right? I mean, we were contemplating this goose in a bottle. How does that work? And, but with some observation, we came to see ourselves as the goose. Now, you may think, uh, I'm the monk, I'm, I'm telling the story, but in truth, we all play that role. Because, you see, the goose gets out when we realize there's no bottle, there's no goose. It's just a story. We can talk about geese and bottles and make it meaningful because we're human. That's what humans do. We build bottles and then we get ourselves out of them. And being human is especially important right now because the bottle in which we're stuck, 
the one that's causing all this pain, it's cold and mechanical and it's decidedly not human. And we're starting to realize in a way that we never have before that we are the model for what we create. We're saying to whomever will listen, we should not be made to conform to our tools. Our tools should be made to conform to us. We want our new bottle to be shaped more like us. We want it to be human. Now, I believe that business can and must lead us into this new bottle. And to do it, it has to pay attention to three things, three institutions within business. Communication, organization, and knowledge. Each of these is attended by a retinue of old bottle, time-tested solutions that no longer work, but they're seductive. So executives, or managers, or people whose jobs you know, involve decisions that affect these three things, you have the potential to be a leader that helps us get out of the bottle. So the first example is communications, the most immediate. Our old bottle sees communication as a sort of a, a simple mechanical system like a lever, which, hey, that's all fine, until you realize that people aren't inanimate masses. Our communications efforts treat people like objects, and we have the audacity to do things like call them targets. In the new bottle, we recognize that organizations are just nodes in a social network, and they have to earn trust by behaving as good faith participants in that network, just like the rest of us. Our new bottle wants more human communication. Human brands give before they ask. They connect people in their network and they broker knowledge and trust. If you manage a brand or you uh, create communications for one, and you're considering an approach that involves telling people what to think or telling them what to do or repeating yourself endlessly, Forget yourself as a participant in that narrative. Be a leader that gets out of the bottle. The Tom's Shoes brand is a beautiful example. With their one-to-one -one model, they, they give whenever you buy something. They have given away over 10 million shoes to people in 59 countries. They, they don't do marketing. They communicate to make a difference. Right? Their brand, their communication is how they expose their journey to become what they aspire to be. Organization. Our old bottle is really old. I mean, there are probably, I don't know, like a million business books and consultants and speakers who will tell you all about, you know, uh, motivation theory and breaking through silos and, I don't know, polka dotted armadillos or whatever it is. And it, it's all virtuous stuff, right? But if your organization has more than like eight people in it, it's almost certainly managed according to a set of insights that are over a hundred years old. Unless we find a new set of foundational assumptions for organization, it is a significant challenge to sustain the virtues to which we aspire. And the evidence is certainly suggestive. Gallup tells us that over 70% of the workforce in the US and Canada is either not engaged or actively disengaged at work. And those are the best numbers anywhere in the world. So in the new bottle, we see that organization is just trust. It's trust in network form. It's trust that's brokered. It's created. It's a creative act. It's human, right? So in, in, in human organizations, we protect the people who generate novel insights, and, and we, we, bro we protect the people who broker trust. Human organizations have a fluid, organic structure. They can get big, but they retain that fluidity. So if you're a leader and you deal with management and you're called upon to promote somebody for merely political reasons, or you have to conduct research just to figure out what the people in your own company think, forget yourself as a participant in that narrative. Be a leader that gets out of the bottle. There's a model called holacracy in which leadership is imagined in a fluid kind of way, and it's working. There are companies using it. I, I had a list that I was going to bring today to tell you about, but just last week, Zappos announced that they're adopting holacracy. At my firm, we're implementing a, a management structure that we created that's based on the work of a philosopher and a cognitive science, and it mimics complex biology. With these kinds of models, we can build organizations that reflect the way that people really work and play, instead of organizations that are in conflict with our humanity. So knowledge. In our organizations and our businesses, we have systems that we call knowledge management systems. They don't. <laughs> they don't manage knowledge. They, they hold data. They're really where knowledge goes to die. It, 
it, it's a really perfect metaphor for how business thinks about knowledge generally. Most of what business thinks it's know, it knows is pretty suspicious. I mean, there's really more that business doesn't know that it knows because it doesn't know how to ask for it or find it. In fact, I know this very large firm, Fortune 50 company, that had significant risk exposure from workers cutting their arms with box cutters. And they tried everything they could to figure this out. They hired consultants and went through the whole process, but they, they finally you know, decided they were going to give up. They couldn't figure it out, except one day, the consultants and the risk managers are walking on the floor of one of these facilities where the injuries happens, and a worker walks up from the floor and he says, hey, I couldn't help but overhear what you were talking about. I've got the answer. You just need to round off the blades. Turns out he was right. It significantly reduced injuries, and it saved tens of millions of dollars. And they said, why didn't you tell anyone? And he said, no one ever asked. If it's difficult to see the person holding in the knife as a person holding knowledge, forget yourself. Be a leader that gets out of the bottle. Our businesses need to become learning organizations. My friend Dave Gray uh, wrote a brilliant book about this called The Connected Company. And in a speech he just gave recently, he posted that he gave in London, he said something that really captured this idea of a learning human organization for me. He talked about the distance between what companies say and what they do. So espouse theory and theories in use, right? So what do we say we believe and what does our behavior suggest we really believe, right? He used the example of a company that says they're all about collaboration. And he asked the CEO, well, how do you decide how to collaborate? And the CEO said, well, I decide. <laughs> so espouse theories. So what Dave says is that what we want to do is we want to move our theories in use closer to our espouse theories. We want business to be able to be honest with itself. So for business to get out of the bottle and be human really means understanding that you're always in the process of becoming what you aspire to be. Always. So we understand now what we must do. Our pain is significant, and our trust in ourselves is so low that it might seem the only rational response is a sort of wry cynicism. But there's reason to be hopeful. Business has the fluidity and the tools and the motive to get us out of this bottle. Leaders, wherever you are in your organization, you have the potential now to see that old bottle around you. You can begin to, to forget yourself as a participant in that old bottle. Because never before has there been a greater desire for a world that is more humane, more human. You, the leaders that see this moment and help us create more human business, you will be the reason why we can say, the goose is out. Thank you very much. <laughs>